David Taylor, how are you, sir? Good, Ariel. Pleasure. Thank you. Thank you so much for the time. Have yeah, absolutely. And I have to apologize to you. I had to change the time on you a couple of times. Uh, you could blame other people for that, but not my style. So thank you for being very flexible. I really appreciate it. Yeah, absolutely. I'm really happy to be here. A uh, huge honor for us. You're incredible. You're one of the best American wrestlers on the planet, one of the best wrestlers on the planet. In fact, you just won the world championships a uh, second time. For those that may not know, Olympic gold medalist, uh, multiple time world champion, multiple time national champion, multiple time Dan Hodge trophy winner. And you were in, you just signed with uh, Iridium, which is one of the top, um, you know, sports agencies, combat sports agencies in the biz. Jason House, one of the top managers. Why did you sign with them? So I've known Izzy Silva for a long time. Um, and you know, I've just kind of at that point in my career where I just like to have some representation, you know, and I think having, you know, someone that's credible in the space, but also it's like good people. And, uh, you know, Izzy, he's like, Hey, you got to meet Jason, sat down with him. And after really just the first call, I said, this is a good fit for me. And then being here this weekend, getting to know, you know, the crew a little bit better, just kind of reinforced that this was a really good decision. And, um, so I'm excited. I think they can help navigate things for me as I continue moving, you know, to, to, for my career, but obviously as things uh, go past that as well. And by the way, up until this point, you didn't have representation? Not really, no. Is that common? Well, in wrestling, it's just a different space, you know? Um, I think, you know, you, 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 the opportunities within our sport, you, you kind of can navigate those things. But getting to that point, you know, after, you know, winning the Olympic gold medal, going to the second Olympics, you know, just kind of having you know, good, good representation, I think is important. And I think a lot of people have it, um, but obviously having a, a really credible, um, you know, group that you can work with, I think is important. And so I was wondering when I heard about this, oh, is this, uh, you know, his foray into the world of MMA? We've seen so many come from the world of wrestling, of course, a man, you know, Bo Nickel doing big things. Is this your foray into the world of MMA? You know, people ask me that all the time. And I would say, you know, after watching, you know, the fights last night in Madison Square Garden or two nights ago, you know, I think in the sport of wrestling, you know, I've accomplished everything that I want to accomplish. Um, you know, winning a second Olympic gold medal in Paris in 2024 is top priority. But you know, if, if, if I want to pursue being the best combat athlete of all time, stepping the octagon is something that will have to happen. Is that going to happen? I don't know yet. Okay. But I'm, I'm definitely considering it more than I'd ever considered it before. And uh, I just think it's kind of, it's, if, if that's the step that I want to take, you know, it's, um, you understand, you know, kind of what, what you're up against. You know, you understand, um, you know, people have been doing this their entire life. It's no joke. You know, it's a, it's a livelihood. It's a, uh, it's a profession, but I've been competing at the highest level my whole life. And uh, when it comes down to being a competitor, I'll bet on myself every single time. So it's a matter of, you know, you know, if that's a decision that I make, you know, it's, it will be, uh, it'll be the best. Why are you considering it now? You say you, uh, you know, you're, you're considering it more now than before. Why now? Why, why more now than before? Well, I, I think when, you know, obviously when you see, that was your first to, UFC event, right? That you first to? UFC event. Yeah, yeah. You know, you watch it on TV. You know, and I think being in person is a little different. But you know, wrestling is an amazing sport. Um, but it's a niche sport. You know, where obviously MMA is something that's viewed all around the world. Mm -hmm. um, I think you just your competitive juices get flowing. You know, you see like, wow, okay, this is kind of a, a next level. You know, and it's. Uh, it's exciting, you know, as a competitor, you want to seek out and you want to be the best, you know, and, 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 and wrestling, you know, I, I've done that. And so it's now it's like, well, how many more times do we continue doing that again? Um, and uh, I could see, you know, if that was a path that I chose, you can kind of see like that's a, something new and exciting. And it's, uh, it's a new task. It's something new. Um, you can kind of like be reinvigorated, you know, and um, you're just chasing, you'd be chasing greatness, you know, and uh that's something that interests me. Has Bo's success changed your stance on your potential for a MMA? Well, I think, you know, just, you know, Bo being around Bo my entire life, or I wouldn't say my entire life, but for most of the last 10 years, yeah. you know, I would just see like he's, uh, you know, you know, whatever he's going to do, he's going to be extremely successful in it. And just seeing for him as he's made the transition from wrestling into fighting, he's just, uh, it's, it's very important to him. And you can see with uh, the success that he's having, it is correlating with the time that he's putting into it. It's so exciting. You know, I'm super excited for him. It's awesome. Like he's, uh, he's so gifted in so many ways. And now this outlet, I think is a perfect outlet for him. And um, I'm excited to continue following his journey. It's like, I, I really believe like the sky's the limit for him.
And of course, for those that may not know, you're both uh, Penn State uh, alum, right? So obviously you have a connection to him. I'm just wondering, has he exceeded your expectations thus far? No? no. You, you knew he was going to steamroll? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I remember, so I remember when Bo came on his visit to Penn State, you know, I remember walking around with him and his family and just um, spent time with them. We've known each other for a long time. Like we've been training partners, we've competed with each other. And I, I, we, we, we talked about that in wrestling. Like when we wrestle with each other, good things happen, you know? And, um, but now seeing that when he's made this transition, it doesn't surprise me at all. You know, he's just, he's, he's so gifted and this is something that he's really wanted to do. And you can see like, he's very determined and has a very specific purpose and goal. And, uh, yeah, is, uh, I, I, I'm excited for him. I think he's he's a dangerous guy to fight against, and I don't think anyone's going to want to fight him. Uh, your takeaway from Saturday, obviously the, the energy is incredible. That was an incredible car to go to. I mean, like one of the best of the year, one of the best in recent memory. When you're sitting there watching this, is there any part of you that's thinking like, I, I want this, I want to be a part of something like this? It's hard as a competitor to sit in that arena and not feel that way. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. it's electric. You're like, wow. I mean, just... Uh, but obviously, it's just that's not a, it's not something that I've done. But if you talk, you know, from combat from a combat sports standpoint, you know, wrestlers can make that transition and do really well, you know. And um, but it's uh, it's it's definitely a different path, you know. Obviously, you got to understand when you walk into an arena, like some people get to go and celebrate with their family, and some people go to the hospital. You know, in wrestling, that's not the case. You know, right. worst case scenario, you get taken down, you get beat. You're not you're not beaten. You know, you, you, your ego hurts. You know, you're, you're frustrated but you just regroup and you can wrestle the next day if you want to. You know, fighting's a different world when it comes to that kind of stuff. And I think it definitely takes a different mentality and um, gotta have a really clear purpose if, if for those that decide that route. I know you guys get asked about this all the time because of the success of so many wrestlers in, uh, in MMA. Was there ever a period where you were like, no way, I would never do this? I know Jordan Burroughs has been asked this question a million times as well, and he's been pretty clear. Recently, the, the tune has changed a little bit, maybe a one-off, but was there ever a point where you were like, nah, this isn't for me? I probably always felt that way. Okay. You know, I probably always felt that way um, because of the things I said. You yeah. know, it's like my, my biggest analogy is in wrestling, you know, you, you get caught in a trap arm, yeah. you get caught in a leg lace, the match may be over by points, but you're not in the hospital. Right. You know, um, but again, I, I think after being there and seeing it, you know, it definitely is, uh, it, I feel like it opens that door a little bit, you know, and you realize, okay, well, in combat sports, this is the pinnacle, you know, and if uh, it, I could, I, you know, you don't know what's going to happen, right? But you can see, like, hey, if I decided this is something I wanted to do, I think I'd be really successful in it. Have you ever just tried sparring? I mean, we, we in wrestling we spar all the time, yeah. you know. So I think that the the idea of sparring and that kind of give and give and take is something that we do all the time. Um, I've, done, I've I've messed around a little bit of like jujitsu and stuff, but not much with mitts. Uh, one time I asked Bo Nickel when he first announced that he was coming to MMA uh, how he felt about getting punched in the face. He held that against me for a very long time. But the reason I was asking him the question was, you know, there was always this knock on Brock Lesnar that he didn't like to get punched. It's a diff Obviously, you guys are getting smashed. I mean, I see your ears. You guys get hit very hard, but it's a different type of hitting, right? And so I would ask you the same, like the, the idea of getting punched in the face, probably not your favorite thing. Yeah. I mean, that's not something that only anyone wants to get punched yeah. in the face, you yeah. know? Um, but... In wrestling, I feel like when you're when you're really technical, you avoid those things. You mm -hmm. avoid like the random elbows and the headbutts and things like that because you're you're kind of ahead. You understand kind of where you're at in space and you navigate. And especially the way that I wrestle, I'm really technical. Um, so like you you kind of know exactly where you're at and where you want to get to, and you know kind of what to navigate. I would think that in fighting. Um, when you get to that level, there's an element of that. Obviously, there's a lot of uncertainty as well. Um, I don't think any fighter probably goes out there with the intention to want to get punched in the face, right. you know, but I think obviously that's just part of the landscape and, you know, you'd have to get used to it. So you, you just mentioned 2024 is your goal. You want to make another run, right? Yeah. You want to be on that team. Do, is a par, any part of you feel like you really want this because as great as 2021, you know, quote unquote, 2020 was, you didn't really get the full Olympic experience, right? Do you, is, does that have anything to do with it or would you have gone for 2024 even if, you know, Tokyo was just your regular Olympic. So my goal at a young age was to win the Olympics. Yeah. Because you know, I just thought, hey, and this is the best thing you can do in wrestling. You know, and I think as as you go, you realize, well, this is a hard thing to accomplish. You know, just so for those that don't understand, you know, in wrestling, so you have the world championships, there's 10 weight classes. The Olympics happen once every four years. You, we go from 10 weight classes to six weight classes. So just in the United States alone right now, you have multiple time world champions that then shrink to be going to the same weight classes just to make the team in the United States. They then go the best wrestle the 
best 16 other guys in the world in the Olympic year. Um, but I would say like after achieving that, you know, in 2020, um, it being postponed to 2021, it was kind of like, well, what's next, you know? And as a competitor, you just kind of like, well, I'm, a, I still am in the peak shape conditioning. Um, I believe I'm still the best. And then I think because it got postponed, it wasn't a four year wait. It was only a two year wait really, you know, and now we're, we're, we're well into that cycle. You know, the next Olympic trials are going to be, you know, April, um, Actually, I think they're going to be in State College of 2024. So there was a lot. The, the light in the tunnel was um, wasn't as long. Didn't seem as daunting. You know, like four more years. Okay. Um, but I think I'd always kind of set. Um, I always believed I was in wrestling through 2024, um, just because of timing, my age, the situation that I was in, and to not have that full experience in 2020. I tell people a lot. It actually, I feel like, made it a lot easier to win because there was all you did is we just showed up. We did our own thing and we wrestled and left. But there's an element of showmanship that I like, that I missed. And to think about being able to do that in Paris, which is a more palatable time change. Yeah. People are gonna be able to watch it more often. And it's people just missed out. They haven't been there for eight years. Right. That's something I think everyone's gonna wanna go and watch. So I think it's uh, it's exciting. And there's only been a few that have won two Olympic gold medals. You know, So it's something that, uh, it's a goal that I've shifted to and it's become the new priority for me. March slash April 2020, when you got the word that the Olympic Games weren't happening and you're you're peaking now, right? What, what was that moment like? It was hard. So for me, actually, in, so I won the world in 2018, my first world championship um, at 28. So I was the oldest or second oldest first time world champion. So most people in attrition our sport, is the average age is like in your low 20s. Well, I came back from that kind of like, all right, won the first world championship and race are rattling these things off. Um, and I tore my ACL in an exhibition match, actually, in Madison, in Madison Square Garden. Beat the um, streets, right? Beat the streets. Yeah. So I was just rehabbing back from that. So I, ha- I was in a situation where I'm like less than a year, I either get the surgery and come back for the Olympic trials, or I don't get the surgery and wrestle hurt and get to the Olympics. But there was obviously, I was on a 10-month timeline. So I just I just wrestled. I made the decision to get the surgery. I, I wrestled all the way back. or I, I got back. I was in actually in Canada qualifying the weight for the Olympic Games with the Olympic qualifier when everything was shutting down. I'm just like, please just like let this match happen, let us qualify, and then we'll see what happens after that. Because right. a lot of places were shutting down like, right. this is over. Um, so we qualified the weight, we drove across the border that night and everything got shut down the next morning, Wow, which was pretty crazy. So I think for me it was a little challenging because it was like a two year delay because I was hurt, so I didn't wrestle that whole year. And I was just training to try and get back. Cause I'm like, all right, I can't wrestle like the rest of my competition but I can manage what I can manage. I can be in great shape. I can have my nutrition dialed in. So the day I get the green light to be back ready to wrestle, I only have a few months to get to peak shape conditioning to make this Olympic team. Um, so I'd had that mindset. So when it got delayed, now it's a whole nother year. So it was like a two year sprint. It wasn't like, oh, I'm peaking up. You know, I was, I was peaked up and I had to do that for a whole nother year. And that was challenging. That was challenging just because the way my mentality is I'm, I'm an all in guy. So I'm, I was ready. I was back. I was dialed in. I knew I had this short timeline. You know, I was ready to compete. And then now I have to wait a whole nother year. It was a little challenging. And I felt like I experienced some burnout into the Olympics in 2021 because of that. And I had to really battle a lot that year with just like staying focused because there was no, I basically didn't have a break for two years. Right. You know? And you're working um, on your garage, right? I yeah. mean, for a good period of time. Like uh, I was listening to an interview with you on a podcast called, um, Wrestling saved my life, right? Is that what it's called? Yeah, wrestling changed my life. Changed yeah. my life, excuse me. You were talking about like cry- like sometimes you're screaming at yourself, you're crying because I guess like you're just stuck by yourself. You can't go train with anyone. That must have been a real mental hurdle to get over. I mean, hurdle is probably putting it mildly. Yeah, I mean, you, you know, in wrestling, you're, ch- you're training a lot with other people. You know, you're pushing and, not, you know, you're like that element of being a competitor where you're with other person, you're kind of doing this. Um, and then as soon as things got shut down, I gather as much gym equipment as I possibly could. Some people let me borrow some of their things. I had the squat rack that from a friend of mine in town that plugged into the back of my truck, wow. you know, so I'm by myself, no spotter, you know, and I'm just training. And, uh, you know, obviously a little bit of frustration. I'm like, hey, I thought, you know, we were back and I'm getting ready for the Olympics and I got to wait a whole nother, you know, year, year and a half to the Olympics. Um, but I don't want to, I didn't lose step. So yeah, you're in there training, like doing these hard workouts. Um, so I work with Sam Calvita, the training lab. And, you know, I've been working with him since 2016 and he's the workouts he's sending me. I'm looking through them like, coach, 
these are brutal, yeah. you know, but, but it was like our mindset was like, well, now we'll separate ourselves from everybody else. We'll put the time into training that maybe we wouldn't have because you got to balance it with wrestling. Um, I mean, just the workouts were just, they were monsters, you know, but I think it helped mentally too. Just like, man, if I'm getting through these things, it's kind of mentally got me a little bit stronger to make that run in Tokyo. When, when you went to Tokyo, was your wife there? No, we didn't have anybody there. Wow. You weren't allowed? No. God, no. that must have been tough. Well, even with that, it was like, Every day it was uh, maybe shut down, maybe not. So every day you're training for right. this thing. With the Olympics too, it's um, you have to be the best, but also the best at the right time. So it's once every four years. Right. So maybe you know you're the best in one of those middle years, and whatever happens, injury, age, you know, lack of focus. If you're not making the team, you got to wait four more years to get ready. You know, so it's like, and then every day they were saying could have it, could right. not have it, maybe we'll have it. So in my mind, you know, people, I just, my advice, like, we're going to have it. We can only train with that mentality. You know, you can't let a sliver of doubt slip in, like, maybe it's not going to happen. Because we can't control that. Um, but when we're there, too, you get tested every single day. You know, if you get COVID when you're there, out. You're you know, out. In the, in early in the Olympics, they were pulling people out. Right. You know, so that's another variable. So stressful. You know, it's kind of crazy. So I just think that Olympic, it, it'll go down history as such a difficult one because what everyone had to do to get there during that period of time and then obviously what we had to do while we were there you know it's there'll never be like a time like that you know probably hopefully in the rest not. of time hopefully yeah. not and and then you have the situation where i heard you say so usually you know olympics but then the world championships are two years later here they were a year later and that was the toughest year of your life right because yeah. just because you you really had no time to come down and at least like you know enjoy the moment you had to get right back into it, correct? Yeah. Eight weeks later. Eight weeks later. Yeah. So the 2021 World Championships were still on the schedule as when they were. The Olympics were in August. The 2021 World Championships were always going to be in September. Uh -huh. um, but when the Olympics got pushed back to August of 2021, we knew it was only eight weeks till the World Championships. Jeez, Louise. So you know, just a kind of little like for for me, like the biggest rivalry in the world is is myself and Hassan Yazdani from Iran. You know, he was. Uh, He's a three-time three -time world champion. He's a four-time world champion, Olympic champion. His only losses have been to me. Um, and he won the Olympics in 2016. He won it in 17. I beat him in 18. I got hurt. He won in 19. I beat him in the Olympic finals in 20. Um, eight weeks later, he beat me in the world championships. And then this year, I just beat him back in the world championships again. Dang. So it's like you know, we're just on this collision course every year. We're kind of like the motivating factor for each other to continue to get better. You know, and um, you like this guy, or is he like, is he a cool dude? Yeah, or? he's like, yeah, he is. I mean, I think he's a guy a that, dick. you know, I think he he loves wrestling and he you know, represents his country, you know, to the best of his ability. Just like I try and take pride in representing the United States to the best of my ability. And um, he's a great competitor. He's a fierce competitor. You know, he he, we do you know the way that we wrestle. We're wrestling to try and dominate our opponents, and it's like we're both teching and pinning everybody till we wrestle each other, and then it's just this fierce battle, you know, where every point, every second is, is crucial, you know, to the outcome. So I beat him. I took him down in the last 20 seconds to win the Olympics. So I was losing with 20 seconds left. I executed takedowns, basically my last chance. If I don't score there, it's over. Um, so I won, it reached this, like, this goal of mine, um, that I've had for my entire life. I come home the day I came home, my wife and I, we have a, a cold press juice company called Katie Roots. We opened our new location the day I got home, day? the day Jeez, I got please. home. Uh, we had our uh, second baby girl three weeks later. Then I had to leave to go to training camp two days after that and then go to the world championships and wrestle this guy that just had something taken from the last 20 seconds had eight weeks to train. And I, I was going, you know, more or less because I'm like, well, I'm healthy. You know, I just missed this one. I just won. I'm still in peak. Um, but I just was lacking a little bit of the motivation. When I went in there and I lost, you know, still a really close match, very similar to the Olympics. Um, with a minute left, I need a takedown. I, I just didn't get it. But then that for the last year what was what motivated me. I'm like, I'm never gonna lose like that ever again. Um, and then I separated myself. I beat him seven one this year. Um, between our trials process and the world championships, I didn't give up any uh, any offensive points. And uh, but you but were you not doubting yourself beforehand? Yeah, I was thinking for one of the Did first you, times in my life I had some doubt. And and weren't you close to pulling out? Yeah, I just it, it was. I was you know the, the year it was just like I'm trying to find like what's next, you know, like kind of like, you know, we talked about a little bit earlier and ultimately like for me, it was, I beat this guy, yeah. you know, I, I, I'm not, you know, I achieved this lifelong goal and I'm not definitely not 
going to like end with this guy beating me when I don't feel like it was my best. Um, and going into it, I wouldn't even, I would say probably was maybe one of the, the challenging years because of, you know, the different things that we have, you know, like my wife and I, we have, we have two girls now, you know, like we have different businesses. I have a youth training center at home called M2 Training Center. Like Ben Askren, right? Our clubs compete against each other all the time. Daniel Cormier, our clubs are in the same league, the Premier National League. We just started. So folks on that, you know, it just got different phase of my life now, you know, and, and just realizing like, I love to compete, you know, and it took me some time to kind of maybe kind of re refine that fire. And then once I did, you know, I was, I went in with a very specific game plan and executed it. And, uh, you know, really from the matches that were very close, I was able to separate myself, you know, obviously now going into the next two years, you know, the world championships, and the Olympics, knowing I'm gonna have to beat that guy two more times. Man. So is, is the goal, the hope gold medal in Paris and then retire at that point, think, what else do you have to yeah, do? Yeah. You know, I think it's a reevaluation after that, you know, it's easy. Like, you know, when you have something that you're really focused on that you can prioritize and, you know, understand like, you know, this is your why, you know, you can find your why in anything that we're doing. Um, and, uh, you know, af after that, you know, after Paris, definitely reevaluate this year, this cycle was hard because we were thrown into it before mm -hmm. we even started, you know, like the Olympics were a year later, the world championships were eight weeks after that, you know, um, so you didn't really, most people after they win the Olympics, they, they can process, you have a year, right. you can, you know, you can do your tour, you can take some time off, you can do, but you know, in a, such a short period of time to be thrown right back into it. And then also I lost, it was just like, man, I had all these mixed emotions, yeah. you know? And then what, now I feel like, you know, I feel like I have really good clarity, you know, training a little bit different, um, and being a little bit older you know, it for wrestling. But I feel like I feel better. My performances are better. Um, and I think I took took that to realize like what I've been doing for the last five years or 25 years to be an Olympic champion, um, don't necessarily do the exact same thing for the next two years. Mm. You know, you put in all this time. Uh, a friend of mine actually told me, he said, you know, the horse that got you to town is not gonna be the same horse that gets you to the next town. Oh. You know, and that, that just really clicked with me yeah. and resonated. And uh, you know, I feel like just definitely gave me really good clarity. Obviously, selfishly, and I think I speak for a lot of uh, MMA fans, would love to see how you do in MMA, considering how incredible of a wrestler you are. If you don't go that, you know, down that path, what do you think you'll do when you retire? Obviously, you have the the, the youth team and, and you've got businesses. How will you, you know, keep those competitive juices flowing? It's a good question. You know, it's a good question. I think that's where, you know, like my wife and I, we talk about all the time, you know, it's just you reevaluate. You know, it's like you, you know what you're going to, and then after that, whatever we decide to shift our focus to, it's about being the best and what we can do in that, you know? And, and that's just, you know, the best is, is a relative term, but I, I've only really known to be the best at what I've done since a, as a young age, best in the state, best in the country, best in the world, you know? So I just think that competitiveness will never go away. It'll just be finding something new to, you know, put that, those, that outlet towards. So, um, but you know, just my wife and I are a great team and I couldn't do anything without her. So everything that all our decisions that we make, you know, it's sitting down talking with each other and, um, and kind of finding that route because, you know, without her, I, I wouldn't be able to do any of these things. Why does it seem like so many, uh, great wrestlers who didn't win a gold medal go to MMA, but so many gold medalists don't go into MMA. Do you know what I'm saying? Well, I think it's that fulfillment, okay. right? Cause it's like, you know, we all know that that's the highest thing that you can do, but it's, it's really hard, right? Yeah. Timing, competitiveness all the things that go into it. Um, so I think it's like, if, if you don't get that, then it's the next, I mean, if for wrestlers, I would say, I, I was talking to Daniel yesterday and he basically said, I would trade everything to be an Olympic gold medalist, you know? And it's like, it's kind of crazy to think that way, you know, because he's so successful, you know, but he loves wrestling, you know? And like, but you know, obviously, but I think that motivated him to be the greatest fighter, mm. you know? So I just think it's, uh, you're just, wrestlers were wired a certain way. We're trying, we're, we're wired to be the best at what we do. It's so competitive. And then fighting is the same way. It's you just, you don't have a team. You don't have a team to pick you up. You know, you don't have, I had a bad day. I have 10 other players in the field that can have good days right. that can make up for it. If you have a bad day. It's on you, you know, and you either got to, you know, you don't fill it or you got to get tough and find a way to do it. Um, and MMA is, is, is their parallel when it comes to that. America loves combat sports, but why does it feel like they don't love, they don't show you guys the love that you deserve? I, I, I asked you that question, yeah. you know, like you're, you know, you understand combat sports better than anybody. Yeah. Um, 
but I don't cover collegiate wrestling. Is that what you're implying? I've dropped the ball <laughs> for America. I've yeah. let America down. Yeah. No, I mean, no, it's I'm, a, not, I'm not, I'm not no, saying that. No, I know. That. No, but I get, I get it a lot. Like, why don't you cover this? Why don't you cover that? I get it with jujitsu as well. Why don't you cover the ADCC? My response is like, there's just, so, there's so much MMA. There's only yeah. so much I could cover, but why does it feel like you're a freaking gold medalist, man? Why does it feel like, you know, and correct me if I'm wrong, you walk down the street in New York it's only people are stopping you and they should stop you. And so why is that? Because America loves fighters and right. they, they love like hard nosed, hard hat guy. Like that's who you are. And, uh, I mean, you Gable, Gable's a little different cause he's doing the wrestling thing now, the WWE yeah. thing, but I don't know. I feel like you guys should get more love. Well, I think that, uh, you know, steps like this are huge for our sport. You know, I appreciate you, you allocating your time slot to have me come on. You know, it's a, uh, it's a great opportunity to be able to talk about wrestling, you know, and talk about these things. And I think, I think wrestling is 100% moving in a great direction. There's okay. definitely more resources putting into it. And I think now people are realizing that wrestling is a foundation to making great fighters, you know? <laughs> and a lot of people are putting time and energy now at a younger age. Kids are now allocating time to strike, do jujitsu, because they understand like, hey, this is the, you know, whether it's for to be the great or to be famous or whatever it may be, they can see that as an outlet, you know? And um, so I think that wrestling is moving in that direction. You know, we, our events, you know, our national championships are sold out every year. You know, we got great, great broadcast, broadcasts on ESPN, the Big Ten Network. Um, there's more personalities in the sport now that are, that are more marketable. It's growing. You know, I think it's becoming more mainstream. So it's a combination of all those things. It takes time. Um, wrestling, I think, as a whole is a, maybe just a little stuck in its ways of kind of like there was this mentality of, you got to hustle and grind your whole life. And once you win the Olympics, then you can reap the rewards. Mm -hmm. Well, there's a lot of things that can happen during that process, you know? And I think the idea of, you know, growing your brand and that kind of stuff. So I think wrestling is taking more steps in that direction. Um, but obviously opportunities like this are, are really valuable to kind of be able to talk about it. Would you ever go down the WWE path? You know, I think, like I said, when I'm done wrestling, it's what, what's, what's, you know, I have to sit down and say like, well, what's next? What's going to like, wh where can I allocate this competitiveness to, you know? And I think that's, that could definitely be an option. You know, we'll just, um, you know, definitely got to sit down with the team and talk about it and see what opportunities are available. But, uh, you know, I'm definitely not closing the door to anything. You okay. know? And I think it's a matter of like this year, I tell myself a lot, you know, going into this year's world championships, you know, it's just, when my mind, when I, when I make up decision, I don't have, I've never set a goal and not accomplished it. It might take me a little bit more time to get that goal, but I've accomplished every goal I've ever set, set up that I've set out to do. So, um, you know, when the time comes to make a tr transition away from wrestling, you know, just set that next goal and go fearlessly pursue it. Don't be afraid to fail. And, uh, you know, I believe I can accomplish those things. This MMA thing is very exciting to me. I thought you were just going to be like, nah, not my thing. If, if, if 10 is you stepping into a cage and fighting, where are we at right now on a scale of one to 10? And one's what? One is like, no absolutely way. not. Yeah. Um, hmm. You know, I, I'd say we'll probably, uh, probably around a four. Okay. Probably around a four. And right? maybe not that long ago you were At closer one. to one. Yeah. yeah. Wow. You know, I think, I just, I think you just see it. I think you can see like, you know, Hey, if, if this is something that I really put my time into it, it's something new and exciting, you know, and you pivot and, uh, it could be something that's really exciting, you know, but again, it's, uh, it's a different world, you know, yes. it's a different world. There's definitely different risks assessed with it, but there's a, there's a lot of reward as well. They've got, uh, the ATT gym opening up in, uh, state college, right? Yeah. I was leading the charge over there. I mean, it's all right there for you. If you do, uh, want to announce that you're coming over to MMA, you're welcome to come on the show anytime to do that. Okay. I think that would be a big deal. You'd have a lot of people throwing a lot of money your way, I think, especially considering how Bo is doing, but really, I mean, I think we've all known for a long time your base is the best base, right? You could get you could figure out the striking stuff later and you could have a pretty damn good career with just your base. Uh it's the ones who come in as the strikers who then have to figure out what you know so well who have trouble. So I think you would do pretty damn good. Well, thank just you. My uh, t my yeah. two cents. Yeah, well, I'm maybe, sure you've had other people. Maybe you and that. I will have to do some striking. Oh, uh what me against you? Yeah, well, we no, could practice. Wait, I think I'm too big for you. We can practice together. Honest. Yeah, you want me to teach yeah. you a few things. Yeah. I like that. Uh I think you would kick my ass, even with no striking, just because you're supremely tough. I mean, your ears are incredible. Can you even put uh, AirPods in there? I'll tell you what's really challenging. Yeah. You know, I've always had that problem with with head with headphones. I've always had big ears. You yeah. Know? And then as time's gone on, I've gotten cauliflower as well. So like it never fits. They're always falling out. I'm always touching them and skipping things. Oh god. You know. 
down. I'm like, Gosh, you need to it. use the uh, the cans, right? Yeah, you, you got to get like the the over the ear noise canceling ones. ones. You know, um, they're really good for, for traveling. You know, right. traveling over the world, competing. You know, so it's definitely a valuable thing. Well, uh, great to meet you. I wish you the best in this uh, next cycle. Good luck with the World Championships and then 2024 making that team. And uh, I hope you go back to back. That Thank would be you. incredible. And I hope to see you in a cage one day. Uh, I don't want to try to put any pressure. Or a wrestling ring. I'd love yeah. to see you uh, in WWE too. Well, you know, I, we're, we're, uh, Beat the Streets is an event that happens here all the time, you know. So um, next year, I think we're doing it. I think it's in April. We'll be here in the Hulu Theater. Okay. So love for you to stop by. Thank you. That would be awesome. And before we finish today, I actually have something for you oh. that I wanted to give you. Whoa. Um, so wow. These, uh, these are a new shoe colorway that we're dropping this week. Wow. Um, and uh, the company Scrap Life that I work with, these are my signature shoes, and I wanted to give them to you wow, man. As, a, as a thank you that is for uh, having me on. Wow. Oh, and sign too. Yeah. I really appreciate that. Holy smokes. Thank I, you. I don't I know if you're size 10. If you are, they'll fit you. Look, by the way, these would look great, in my, I mean, among some of the greatest moments, but uh, wow. Thank you. That really means a lot to me. I really appreciate it. Yeah. Great thank to you. meet you. Appreciate All it. All the best. Yeah. Good luck. Thank and, you. And uh, now I'm invested. So I'll be rooting for you, my man. I appreciate man. that. Thank Except you. for when you go up against the Canadians. Please okay. Be nice to them, okay? Yeah, I'll try. Okay. Yeah. All right. <laughs> thank, thank you, you very much. All the best. Yep. Joe will walk you out. Hello there, Mr. Cameraman. I appreciate it. Uh, great to have David Taylor. I mean, that is wrestling royalty, my friends.